when is chatter okay? So this was sort of a joke, but I'd asked Carl in our many conversations and, and emails and notes, you know, is it okay to ever have chatter? And he emphatically said no. Chatter and vibration will dramatically shorten the life of any and every tool. It creates an unnatural cutting and shearing environment that will rapidly affect components of the machine operation. Chatter and vibration is, is most often a sign that your chip load is too low, in extremely rare cases, that your surface feed per minute is too high. So let's go through the steps here to debunk or to get rid of chatter. The first thing you do is you need to know what your chip load per tooth is. If you don't know it, learn it. There's no excuse not to. It's very simple. And don't always trust calculators. It's so easy to uh, calculate your chip load per tooth manually, or I use an Excel or a calculator. Uh, but don't always rely on G-Wizard or HSM or, or whatever feeds and speeds you're using. So Carl has this multi-step process. Let's go through it. When you've got chatter, the first thing to do, analyze your chip load. Make sure it's not less than one half a thou or five tenths of a thou per chip. Otherwise, again, you're pushing the material instead of cutting it or sharing it. Some tools, and again, we're probably getting a little bit into the higher end stuff, actually have an intentionally honed edge that's a little bit thicker than a knife edge, but what it does is it lasts a lot longer. What that means though, is you've got to increase your chip load per tooth. So in that instance, definitely over a thou per tooth. Probably again, not something we're gonna worry about at the uh, sort of beginner or intermediate level. Pay attention to your depth of cut or axial cut. Not gonna lie, axial and radial used to throw me. It's simple. Axial is through the tool, radial is on the side. So the axial cut is how deep you're cutting. And sometimes what you actually want to do is increase your depth of cut, go deeper, but decrease the width of cut or the radial cut. So that's step three. Step four, the radial cut. A lot of times, and one of the things that's big today is chip thinning or high speed machining where you're taking a really deep depth of cut, a narrow width of cut, and you're going faster. It's great, we love it. It's one of the signature parts to HSM and Fusion 360, but be careful because if you take too thin of a radial cut or width of cut, or you're not going fast enough in your inches per minute, you can go back to that original problem we have where you're not taking any real amount of chip. And that goes back to chip thinning. So if you're concerned, take a look and adjust your radial width of cut in or out a little. Service feet per minute, number five. Again, it's the opposite of what I think a lot of people will think, which is that if you have chatter, they think, well, I need more power or more RPMs. No, try going lower. I have found this seven or nine times out of 10. Decreasing your RPM, which is, which is decreasing your service speed per minute, will actually help. And again, a lot of times it's gonna go back to the fact that you're making more of a chip. This also goes back to a host of other questions about the machine itself of spindle play or slop in your table and spindle bearings and so forth. But all else equal here, try lowering your RPMs or service speed per minute a hair. So what do you do? Try cutting it in half. I know that sounds crazy, but literally, drop your RPMs in half, see what happens. And if it's okay, start working your way back up and be formulaic about it. And what you're gonna find is you're gonna hit a sweet spot and when you go too far, you'll get back into that chatter land and stay away from that, back it off a little. Lastly, stage six is the WTF stage. Uh, I had to laugh when Carl sent this to me. If you think everything else is good, here's some things to think about. Tool stick out. I can't emphasize this enough, folks. People think blindly that it doesn't matter, it matters. And it matters on every level. It matters on how much the tool is sticking out of the holder, how long the holder is itself, the machine rigidity, the workpiece setup, it matters. You cannot possibly have too short or too stubby uh, of, a, of a holder setup, period. We use short tools like this you see right here all the time and it kind of looks strange. It is the way to go. For Tormach, I use more set screws than ERs. And most people think ERs are more expensive, they're less run out, they're more precise. They're way less rigid in my experience than the set screw holders. Run out itself, and this is something that you have to deal with when you're collet or spindle or, or, or um, tool holder itself, but that will affect this setup. Don't laugh, but some people just assume things are, are rigid. Check, it's not always rigid. You can measure deflection, you can tap it with a hammer, it kind of depends on whether you're in a fixture or a vise, but don't just assume that your 
setup is perfectly rigid. Likewise, part design, if you're, if you're machining out you know, on the extreme edges of something and not leaving a lot of support material behind it, that's the same thing as not having a rigid setup. Last but not least, don't always assume your material is perfect. You can get bad material, you can get material that has problem areas in it. So worst case, if you really can't figure it out, try another piece of material, stick it in there, see how it works.